fellow readers and welcome to my channel. Uh, my name is Maria and my channel is about reading, books and language learning. If you're new here, welcome. And if you have seen more videos from me, thank you for watching. So, so far on this channel, I haven't made much individual book reviews. Uh, I want to do it more often. And today I want to discuss a book that I finished recently, which is The Penguin Book of Hell. This one is written by uh, Scott J. Bruce. Yeah, Scott J. Bruce. And he's a history professor at Fordham University. And this is, of course, a non-fiction work. Uh, it's about the history of hell throughout uh, the times. So this book starts out with ancient Greece and the Roman Empire. Really briefly mentions a couple of works that were written there on hell. And then continues on to the Middle Ages until um, the time of now. So until the current day. Um, it's not too big. So of course it's not a full length history book and it doesn't read like a history book per se. It um, introduces multiple texts about hell and kind of gives a little bit of advice how to understand it and when the text was written and uh, what was so special about the text. So I have been really enjoying reading this book. However, it took me a very long time to finish it. I started reading it in December of 2021 and I just have finished it in August of 2023. So yeah, a very long time. And now I finished it. I read, I think the last 70 pages in just one day uh, because it was very exciting, especially when we came towards the end of the book, which talks more about our current state uh, of affairs towards our views uh, on hell. And then we stopped dealing with the, like the biblical description of hell and the biblical texts, uh, but more the things that really happened on earth. World wars, the horrible things that happened there in concentration camps, but also uh, the impact of that atomic bomb. An essay on solitary confinement in American prisons. So I found it very interesting and also those texts were more impactful for me because those are the things that really happened uh, to people when they're still alive, <laughs> not to their souls, like in the biblical text, which is a totally different way of viewing hell. But that's a little bit how it started, right? We start out with the ancient Greece uh, before the Christianity and before the Bible. And uh, also there is a little bit of information on the Mesopotamian uh, society and how they viewed it. And uh, they both view uh, the afterlife, after you die, uh, something gloomy and dark and uh, you kind of lose all of your things that make you, <laughs> right? Uh, all of your characteristics and uh, your ideas and and memories. That's how those societies have viewed the afterlife and the Mesopotamians I think didn't make a separation between like evil and good people. Uh, so everyone went to the same place. There was no difference between it. After you died you just went to this like gloomy underworld. Um, and then the Egyptians, they did have a difference um, because they had Anubis who was weighting the hearts of the people and if the heart was too heavy, heavier than the, the feather, then they would go to the underworld and get a different experience on the people that did have a light heart. That's where like the punishable afterlife started, the idea, for so far we know. And also the ancient Greece made a difference between uh, how people would go to the afterlife. It was also called the realm that is forbidden for the living. So only uh, dead souls, <laughs> the souls of dead people could go there. And it, uh, the door to hell was protected by Cerberus and they had uh, Hades as um, the keeper and the, the monarch of hell. Uh, but at that point it was just on the world, it's not hell. And then there were different writers that wrote about the experience and there were legends and myths about the different gods and the titans. And um, there's a small passage on the Tartarus where the titans are kept. It's the hell for the titans, but there are also older gods there. So that was very interesting to read because I don't read much of ancient uh, legends and myths. I want to, I have a lot of books on it, but I have read some, I watched as a child a lot of movies about it, but then you kind of forget everything or you mix uh, Roman gods and ancient Greek gods together. So I really need to read more about it. So that was an interesting introduction. And uh, one of the most important works of that time is Spurgeon's Aenite. There are a lot of books that are mentioned or a lot of texts that are mentioned in this book. 
that uh, I still have to read and I really would like to. So uh, yeah, it, uh, this book uh, made my TBR of um, books that I have to buy and to read even longer than it is right now. So the rest of the book um, continues this time period uh, from like ancient Greece and Rome and it discussed uh, Theogony, which is, the prison, which is a text that describes the prison of Titans, Tartarus. And then we have uh, the, mad the Madness of Hercules, which describes the netherworld. Uh, it's still the same world, but a different text. Of course, a very important work is Odysseus uh, and the Dead's Door by Homer. I have not read it yet, uh, but it's also high on my list, especially after reading this. And also the view of Socrates and Plato on uh, hell and afterlife. And then uh, the realm of shadows by Virgil uh, in his book, The, uh, the Eonite. <laughs> and then we have the early Christian hellscapes. And this is around year 100, 500 uh, after the introduction of Christianity. And um, those texts are describing the fire of hell and uh, the different punishments that are being told there. And then we go to the early middle ages, which is 500 until the year of thousand. Uh, there we have uh, dialogues and also gospels. Most of these texts I never have seen before. So this was all new to me. And then we go into the vision of Tundale, which was written around 1150s. And this one is one of the most vivid and most described landscapes of hell. It was written uh, by Tundale, I think, but uh, Tundale is also the main character and he is not a nice man. So that's a difference between most of the texts that were written by saints or people of the church. Uh, this uh, person was a sinner in his opinion and he wasn't a believer until he had his vision of hell. And in this vision, he was taken into the into, into the underworld, into hell. Uh, the difference was that this time he wasn't just led by the angel and shown everything that was going on there, in, uh, like in some texts before. Uh, he was really experiencing the punishments and the tortures so because he was a sinner himself. And this was his way of realizing that he was sinning in his life and that he had to change his life. So when he was done with his visions, when he woke up, he turned around like 180 degrees and started bettering his life and be more religious. Vision of Tyndale's story is one of the most famous one of that time period. However, a lot of people don't know it um, because the most famous one, of course, is Dante's Inferno, which we um, have a little bit later, like 100 years, 200 years later. So um, then we have the High Middle Ages, uh, which describes also different texts from saints and from priests. And most of them I found a little bit hard to get through. I didn't make a lot of notes. Um, so yeah, I have to come back to this book, try to read them again. Then we have uh, Abandon Our Hope, Dante's Inferno. And yeah, we just read the text from Dante's Inferno and get a little bit notes. Uh, about it and I really liked reading through it uh, so I really want to read The Defying Comedy by Dante and uh, I think I will do it next year but this I have read a couple of pages of the um, poem and so far it is really good really interesting and not as hard as I thought it would be to understand and this was a nice introduction into the text. And after Dante's Inferno, we have the early modern afterlife with a lot of texts about one of the texts really stood out to me, I think. Or, no, there was the no, the 19th century text, which is the next chapter. There was a text by John Furness about the hell for children. That one was very interesting. Uh, actually very horrendous. Uh, so this person, I think he was a priest or a preacher, doesn't really matter. And he made this pamphlet for children to introduce them into Christianity and to talk uh, about um, sins and about hell in the biblical texts. And in his text, he described quite vividly, not to, as good as uh, Tundale's vision, but that one was aimed at adults. This text was aimed at children, little children, and it described also quite vividly uh, the surroundings of hell and the punishments in there. So <laughs> totally not appropriate for children in the way he was describing it. And I think it, at that time it would have been very, very scary. There's a lot of criticism um, later on about this text. And um, yeah, one of the 
criticism that I have read was the text after it, A Place at Old with Mercy from Austin. I thought that one was very good and it criticized the way of this text created um, a religion of terror without any good substantial, of course, evidence. But the children believed it because their surroundings were also believing these things and everyone was so scared to go to hell and tried not to sin but they lived in constant fear when they would go to church and listen to this kind of um, text. Obviously there were a lot of contradictionary, contradictionary things, uh, so things that really didn't add up. Uh, I will talk about them later, but I think at that time those children couldn't understand they were manipulated and couldn't understand how it was so illogical um, that these things couldn't really happen and probably there is of course no hell at all but at that time it was a thing right now it reads more like a very bad fantasy novel so and then we go into the 20th century and beyond so the time that we have now which is a hell of our own making and that one was very impactful for me it's because we are talking about things that really happen to people uh, we're talking about a, a part, a recent part of our history. So at first we start with a text by Vasily Grossman, who is a Jewish uh, Ukrainian writer. And uh, he describes the hell that he has encountered in uh, one of the concentration camps, Treblanka. Treblanka. And yeah, the text was really difficult to go through. Yeah, the, the Nazis at that time tried to masker all of their horrendous crimes and take away all the evidence, but still they found so many things that told the story of the people and what happened to them and how this um, space on earth, this place uh, was like this personal hell for the people there. So uh, yeah, that was a very hard one to read. Then we have a testimony from Yoshitaka Kawamoto about the falling of the atomic bomb and which is called the fire in the sky and the sum of sufferings. Uh, from William Blake and not the other William Blake, but this is prisoner from an American prison. He wrote an essay about his solitary confinement uh, sentence. Uh, a sentence worse than death is the essay called. And he, at that time, he had spent 25 years in solitary confinement, which means that he hadn't uh, had real interactions with other people, with other prisoners. He was just sitting in his small cell. He had a very restricted time, I think like one hour to go outside, but it was not like the outside where the older prisoners were. It was just this small uh, space where you can only see, I think the sky, but maybe that even was closed. No, I think you could see the sky, but that was it. Like and in cold weather, in rainy weather, in snowy weather, that didn't matter. He got that one hour and it was the only moment that he could escape the loud noises because even though he was sitting in his own cell this whole um like prison department was uh, dedicated to solitary confinement and everyone sitting in their own cell and the only thing that they could do was scream and yell and shout and um of course a lot of curses a lot of madness in there so to escape that he only had that one hour a day and further they could read some books but it was only like uh, 10 books and i think also very restricted and how can you read or write or do anything when you're hearing all of this uh, noise around you that was one part of like the punishment in there so you're not entirely alone you hear all of these people but you are alone because you have no mean meaningful conversations or no person that is really talking to you. So that was also a very impactful text. And then the book ends with the Guantanamo mixtape, music uh, from American detention camps, and also the Hell uh, mixtape, it's called, I think. And those are the music that is used in some prisons, but uh, mostly this one was from Guantanamo Bay, to also torture people. Just music that we listen for fun. They were played at a very loud uh, volume at the whole time for 24 or 48 hours so of course it's horrible to experience that and I kind of knew about these things happening of course but reading about it and reading the testaments from people like in the solitary confinement it was more eye-opening about the things that happen in the world that we maybe don't think about on a daily basis and these people are still experience it so yeah that was really um 
Astron ending to, uh, to the book. And that essay from William Blake is compiled with other essays from people from solitary confinement. And you can read it in the book, Hell is a Very Small Place. So if you want to check that out, you can. But after reading all of this text, we can distillate an essence of hell um, because most of the texts describe the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's biblical or the text before that, the ancient texts, or even the things that people describe about the atomic bomb or the world war or even solitary confinement, we see a certain essence that is present in the hell. One of them is, of course, the noise. Uh, it's talked about a lot, the noise. So we have um, all of the, in the biblical uh, text, we have all of the uh, voices and the sounds of people, of souls there. And they're crying, they're screaming, and it's like a continuous noise and we have also the monsters in the ancient text but also the demons in the biblical text that make noise so there's a lot of noise and if we think about war there's also a lot of noise a lot of crying a lot of screaming the same goes for the atomic bomb which was a noise on its own uh, and then the disaster that came after it noise is a big part of hell and then there's the horrible stink that is also continuously without stopping uh, in the ancient world, it's not that much described, but we uh, we do have like a gloomy world uh, filled with smoke there. But um, with the Christian texts, there's a lot of smoke, a lot of stink from the dying corpses, even though one text talks about um, the souls that are there, but the other texts say there's also the, like decomposing bodies. So there's always a horrible stink. Then there is the darkness and the loneliness. Um, which is a weird part in the biblical text because uh, every time they say it's pitch black and it's even darker than pitch black, nothing is seen and the fire there doesn't give any warmth or um, light. However, when the saints go to hell to see it and to experience it, uh, they can see it, which is weird because if it's so dark, you shouldn't see it. But um, there's like this contradictory contradiction in it but yeah darkness and loneliness is also considered part of like the, this hell experience and another big part of it is the inter eternity the time timelessness of hell so it's forever it's never ending and um, for people of course in the solitary confinement it also feels this way because uh, some of them have lifelong sentences and after that that's it you don't know what happens after it if you don't believe in an afterlife then this is your life and you know you don't know how long it will last of course so um for so far you know you're forever there then comes the insanity and the madness and of course the tortures and the pain and sleep deprivation because of course no one in this surrounding can sleep and get rest and the last one is fear which is like intertwined with all of these things. You are in fear of um, going to this place, you are in fear in this place, and you are in fear that it would never end. So uh, these are like the major pillars of hell, um, and all the texts describe some form of it. Other things that were very much used was, of course, fire, but also water. So even in the ancient text, fire played an important role in the underworld, and in the biblical text, it's like the center of all torture everyone is on fire the surrounding is on fire the people are on fire their souls uh, the demons are on fire satan himself as well it's really weird like everything is on fire and it's burning but it doesn't give any warmth it doesn't give any light and people cannot die their souls cannot die because they are there for eternity so it's a really kind of weird of fire and then there's also a lot of mention of water, uh, like oceans, black oceans, seas, rivers, and uh, there are different descriptions of it, how it is used in hell. So a lot of text mention, for example, that there's this like big river or sea in the middle of hell or a place where the noise is so hard, it feels like all of the rivers and oceans of the world come down to it. Uh, water plays in a very important role. and. Uh, one of the recent books that I have read uh, was The Fisherman by John Layan. It's uh, this one, a really good book. Uh, it also is like a story within a story in it. And it tells about this legend of the fisherman. I will not go into much detail. I think I will make a different uh, review for this book. But it talks about the Black Ocean. It's one of the major parts of this legend, the Black Ocean and the Leviathan in it. So uh, very interesting and uses a lot 
of reference towards biblical texts and towards like the hell we know from the biblical text. But hell can also be very hot or very cold. So that's all in ice. Uh, because I think Dante's Inferno describes Satan sitting in ice. So there are a lot of texts that are all contradictory and they describe a different landscape of hell. But there are a lot of themes that come back in it. This book, very interesting. The Fisherman, also a recommendation. And of course, the Bible itself, which I am reading right now. And um, it's I'm reading the introduction and some text in the Bible itself. And so far, it's very interesting to see how this is such a big influence on fiction. So this book is like more an introduction towards all the texts and towards other books. And there is also another book by uh, the Penguin Book of series, uh, which is the Penguin Book of the Undead. Uh, it's like a companion to this book, or this book is a companion to that book. Also about uh, the undead, the spiritual sides in our history and how we see the supernatural. So thank you so much for watching and let me know if this review was interesting and if you would like to read this book. I will see you next time. Goodbye.